Hello, my name is Kevin Cohey. I'm the chairman and CEO of One United Bank, the largest black bank in America. I'm proud to be here talking to my good friend, Pascal, on No Fee, first on black culture in the world. In 1906, we were successful because we had each other's back when no one else did. We built Greenwood, also known as Black Wall Street. Now, we're building the new Black Wall Street together. As the largest black-owned bank, One United Bank knows you, and you can feel it. They have your back with two-day early pay, unapologetically black Visa debit cards with no monthly fee, and a highly rated mobile app. So join One United Bank at oneunited.com today and spread the word. Good morning, Kevin Coy. Good morning. How are you, Pascal? I'm all right today. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you. It's a real pleasure, as usual, to have you with us, my brother. Well, thank you very much. It's good to be seen. So for those who don't know, you're the chairman and CEO of One United Bank, which is the largest Black-owned bank in the U.S. Yes, indeed, I am. Kevin, what motivates you or what motivated you to establish a Black-owned bank and what is your long-term vision for it? Well, the motivation uh, comes from the, the, the concept of a national Black-owned bank as existed among Black American leadership going back to even before slavery. So we did develop the idea, if you will, of a national Black-owned bank. That is something that's been part of the history and the culture of Black Americans for many, many years. You can go back to, to the end of slavery when leaders like Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois were writing about and thinking about how would Black Americans become integrated into this capitalistic system in America effectively. And both of those gentlemen, as different as they were in their approach to what Black Americans should do, still agree that one of the most important things we needed to do is to have a national Black home bank. The, the basic core idea was to, to be a part of capitalism, you needed an institution that had access to the payment system that actually was connected to the government from a financial standpoint and would have the ability, the dream has always been for there to be this institution that would be able to garner what they would call garner the economic spending power of Black America and its allies and to rechannel that spending power back into our communities uh, to create economic parity in society. So in other words, to use our collective resources to help each other to grow and prosper. So that dream has always been there. I mean, all the way through people like Martin Luther King and Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. He talked about the importance of a black owned bank. So that so this this concept, if you will, is not something that we created. It's something that that has existed, has been an important thing to the leadership of Black America, um, it, it, at least since the end of slavery. So so the group of people and what from One United Bank who 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 took on this this challenge, if you will, of making that dream a reality. So that's number one. So this is something that's always been there. It's always been something that was important to Black Americans and a group of people, largely Ivy League educated people that were already successful in previous careers came together. So uh, that's one thing about One United Bank. One United Bank is a very, very extremely talented group of people. It's much more talented than you would see in any bank, period. And that group created this institution. So, so, so that's the background of the institution. Now, in terms of why was I leading that effort, uh, it goes back to some of the things we were talking about previously about when you were referring to your ancestors and your ancestors' role in, in what I'll call the, the world Black civil rights movement. Similarly, 
my family, my great, great, great grandfather was a gentleman by the name of Charles Cohey. And so, it, it, you know, we were fortunate in that the Coheys were, were not slaves. And they had, were tied into the, uh, one of the major tribes, uh, the Chickasaw Indian tribe. And so they were, they had the advantages of being educated to some degree, uh, being able to communicate with the Indians as well as white Americans. And the, his son, Charles Cohey Jr. was the black person who negotiated the treaty with the United States government to get black people land in Oklahoma. There's this very famous story in, 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 in black American history with the most successful example of black Americans creating a community, a, a town, if you will, in this place called Tulsa, Oklahoma. And there was this thing called the Greenwood District. Well, you might ask yourself, why would the most successful black community in America be in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Why wouldn't it be in a big city like a New York or an industrial center like a Pittsburgh or, or, or Philadelphia? Why was it in Tulsa, Oklahoma? Well, that's because that was one of the only places that black people got money, if you will, reparations for slavery. And my great grandfather led that negotiation with the United States government. So I come from a long line of, of, of black men and women who have been instrumental in creating change for black Americans on a national basis. Okay, all right, all right. And in what is your vision, your long-term vision for One United Bank? The long-term vision for One United Bank is to, uh, to eradicate what is known as the racial wealth gap. There is a differential between incomes and net worth of Europeans and Black people really on a worldwide basis. One of the key reasons that exists, of course, it comes from the, the history of systemic racism. That's what created the differential. But one of the things that the biggest thing that perpetuates the differential is differential in financial literacy. Financial literacy, being financially literate is really probably the most important factor in building net worth. And, and that, that differential in financial literacy, we, for the first time in history, we have an actual real opportunity to eradicate that, this gap because of technology. Technology, in particular, the, 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 the things that could be done with managing data now and the things that could be done with artificial intelligence allow us to use technology to make people more financially literate. So One United Bank has created state-of-the-art technology that literally does that, that, that will garner all of the, the financial information on a person, both what we have in the bank, but also all their financial information, pull all their financial information together, and then use artificial intelligence to help that individual to make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, this is a really big deal that's been well recognized in the United States for its potential to create widespread economic change in society. This, this, it's not, not going into it too deeply, but banking has transformed for a business from a business that was largely what they would call utilitarian in nature, like checking the savings accounts and branches. So these would be things that you could, could allow you to perform certain financial functions, but modern day financial services and products can make you money. That they're, they, they're affecting your ability to make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. So, okay, so, so imagine having me look at everything you do, like, okay, Pascal, here, first off, let's reorganize everything into a way where you can see what you have. 
oh, Pascal, we noticed you have this pot of money over here. You have this, this, all this debt over here. You are efficiently using this money to pay down the debt. Or, hey, Pascal, you're paying too much for your mortgage. That's costing you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars a year. Hey, Pascal, we noticed that you don't have any insurance payments here. And if we learn nothing else from COVID is that bad things happen to good people and we have to have things like insurance. So our technology does that all day, every day. You would be getting messages telling you these are the things that's, that are going on with you and your financial situation. And these are the opportunities you have to, to improve your, your financial uh, standing. So that technology, that bringing state-of-the-art technology to minority populations who have traditionally not had access to that kind of technology and that type of knowledge is, is where we're going. We it see it, it see the lack of financial literacy. It's not just an American, it's not just a black problem. It's not just an American problem, but it's actually a worldwide problem because we don't educate, as a world, we don't educate people on one of the most critical things affecting their wellness. In this case, their financial wellness. In this case, the issue of financial literacy. And so, so we have solved that. We, we a Black-owned business, has created that technology that I just described to you. And so, and so that's the, the future is, is, is taking this new generation of financial services that I'm telling you about. This whole new world, everything you know, you know or saw about banking, you could throw away. It's dead as disco. The whole industry is being transformed by financial technology. Now, we also use that financial technology to solve the kinds of problems that people have, in particularly Black people. So here again, you got to understand, banks are not designed for, for normal people. They're designed for people who have at least tens of thousands of dollars. But banks mm -hmm. are set up, their models, their products are set up to work for people who have lots of money. But most people don't. Most people... You know, lots of people can't even get a bank account. Our technology allows you to look at a much broader range of factors than other banks so you can even get an account in the first place. Our products deal with the kind of loans people need. Like, for instance, people need small dollar short term loans at reasonable prices, not big gigantic loans. So why do people need loans? My car's broke. I need $600 to get it fixed. Uh, my baby's sick. I need 1,500 euros now to, because I got to pay this doctor. Those are the kind of financial needs that, that people have. One United Based Technology saw, provides and solves those kinds of problems. Everything like getting your paycheck early. Here again, there's so many, so much of our society, uh, nationally and internationally, that lives paycheck to paycheck. So getting your paycheck early is a big deal to people. So uh, building credit or rebuilding credit. Our technology allows for 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 us to to get to provide products that will help you to rebuild your credit. So we so call these. Like, this Talking Go about ahead. this, Kevin, so how do you prioritize lending to small Black-owned businesses and entrepreneurs who may face challenging accessing traditional bank loans? We don't. For us, people focus on small Black businesses. We focus on Black people. So you, you got to remember the number of businesses is very minuscule compared to the number of people. So we, our, our, our technology, our products and services are targeted at individuals more so than businesses. We, we, see, we, see, we see the financial wealth of individuals as, as being the primary thing that we are focused on. It's not that we don't do work in the area of small business, um, small business lending. We, we do, but that's not a specialty of One United Bank. One United Bank it's built for the people, it's built for the masses, it's something that's a, designed to affect hundreds of millions of people, not some small number of small businesses. Okay, all right. And uh, Kevin, 
regarding Black United Bank, are there any unique challenges that you face as a Black-owned bank in a predominantly white-dominated financial industry? Well, here again, One United Bank is, is, is unique in that because of the importance of the work we do, we receive massive support. It's not just that we have the heart of Black America. We do. We are Black America, Bank. period. We're the most well-known Black financial company in the country, period. So we have the celebrities as customers. We have the political leaders. We have the business leaders as, as customers, uh, so, as well as the people. So we have the masses already. But we also have the corporations. So we have the Googles, the PayPals, the Netflix, the, the Microsofts, the Pfizer's, the Moderna's, uh, the, the Ford's, the Chrysler's, uh, the Harvard universities, the MIT universities. Those are all One United Bank clients. Okay. And why are they One United Bank clients? Because going back to what I just told you, I told you something very important. I told you about a black owned business that can change the world. That's what I just told you about. I told you about a company that a black owned business that's created technology that can eradicate the financial literacy gap. And then by doing that, eradicate the racial in, in, uh, inequality and in income challenge. So, and so when you, do, when you do an important work, people rally to you. People rally to One United Bank. So for us, it, in terms of challenges, our challenge is we took on a big challenge. We took on something that's important to the world. Okay. So it's not, it's not so much, but because of the significance and important of what we do and the, uh, the ability of people to understand what we do and want to support it, we have widespread, we have widespread support among people. So, so that, that's what, that's what I would say to you. Now here again, it, it, it if we were just out to just make money, of course, life would be very much easier. But frankly, most of us have already made money. We made money in, in our earlier careers. And, and so for us, it, we're, we're more about the business of, of, of doing something that's important to change the world. And so you were talking about, you know, your customers, your clients. You were saying mm -hmm. that, you know, you've got politicians, black politicians, you've got celebrities and i know that uh, many celebrities such as for example charlemagne digard from uh, the breakfast club have accounts in your bank so are you entitled to name other black famous people who are part of one united bank family absolutely not <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm a banker i mean one of the things we are a real bank we're a, we're a federal fdic insured financial institution. We're, we're not kind of like a bank or we're not something near, but we're an actual bank like Wells Fargo or Chase or, or, or Citibank or any of those. We're exactly the same thing. The only difference between us and them is we're smart. That's literally the only difference. So of course we can't name our customers, Pascal. And I would yeah, like that with you. You know, actually I asked you the question, but I already knew the answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And so, Kevin, what initiatives or partnerships does your bank have with local organizations or community groups to further support the social and economic advancement of Black people? Okay. Um, there's so many examples, but let me just give you some that we're currently doing. We, uh, we have a, a partnership with Disney. They heard of Disney, big big American entertainment company. Okay, mm, of course. Di Disney owns a company called Marvel, and Marvel is is the company that has for many years made these really interesting characters that have found their way into movies. So, the, the example, of many many movies, but Black Panther, that movie used Marvel's characters. So we did a collaboration with, with Disney and their Marvel division to create a comic book that used Black, the Black Panther figures and, and we put them into to this comic book, book where the superhero is, is making the world more financially literate. 
and we're distributing that comic book, which is very popular right now. We're, we, we distribute hundreds of thousands of these things, and we're, we're only like a couple of months in it, to school children. And, it, 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 and so it, it's using, using modern day imagery and modern day figures and, and, and the kind of things that can appeal to children to start them on their journey to being more financially literate earlier. So it, it's, ta it's, it's taking on this challenge. Um, it, it, here, you know, I worked as one well, well known, like getting Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill yeah. in the United yeah. States. Okay, that's the one United Banks worked, okay? They, what, we, what we did there, you may know the background, the Obama administration, okay. Black people have been building America literally and culturally for over 400 years. Mm -hmm. But yet we found ourselves in a situation where no American currency had anybody black on it. Now, as you know, a country's currency reflects its view of its history, its view of its culture, and its view of what's important in its history and culture. So we just, don't think it's possible to say that Black Americans, after building this thing literally for years, had no role in the build, the building it and its culture. So for us, this was unacceptable. So Obama decides he's going to put Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill. Good move. We, we loved it. Why? She was replacing a, a well-known slaver on the $20 bill. So just that in and of itself, was a sign of was a sign of progress. Well, the next administration came along and decided no can do ex nay on the Harriet Tubman on the on the twenty dollar bill thing. We're just not going to do it. Yeah, I remember that. Well, we were very dis we found that very disappointing. And then that's mm -hmm. where this role of being Black Americans bank comes in, where you where you need an institution that has that both has the heart of the people but also the resources and the talent to be able to affect institutions. So, so what we did was we commissioned a painting of Harriet Tubman. And in that painting, Harriet Tubman's arms are crossed like this. And what that is, is the international sign language symbol for peace and love, which is what Harriet Tubman represented to us as well as this artist. But we knew full well that the movie Black Panther was out at that exact same time. And that same symbolism of the crossed arms was something called the Wukanda salute, which is where these people in this fictitious world um, of where black people were empowered became part of American urban culture. And so people would say, I'm throwing up the Wukanda side. So we took, so we took, so we, so, so our idea was to take our painting, put it on a debit card, and then issued this debit card with, with this picture of Harriet Tubman on the card. Why? Because we knew social would explode. We issued mm -hmm. a card. Million, couple of million people come out. Oh my God, how could you put our beloved Harriet on a debit card? I mean, she's a hero. Like she can't be on something as trite as a debit card. And then of course, followed by 15, 20 million tweets saying, because they're drawing attention to the issue of Harriet and Tuck. Yeah. So the, the, to understand the power of One United Bank and its ability to affect change, it's not just that the story I just told you was just in the New York Times, the Washington Post, Forbes, Fortune, CNBC, all of these big media outlets in America, because it wasn't in all of those. But this thing was also in, on Saturday Night Live. This thing was on TMZ. In other words, we have penetrated culture, penetrated the mainstream culture of America, not just the intellectuals who read, you know, you know, things like Forbes and Fortune and the New York Times and the Washington Post and all, you know, all of this kind of highbrow stuff, but we actually got to the masses itself. Now, we know the result of that campaign because when Biden became president, one of the first things he did within two weeks of being in office, he agreed to put Harry Tubman on a $20 bill. Now in that case, we know when United Bank has a role because we are connected in that kind of way. 
And, and but I use that as an example to show you that the the why Black American leadership wanted to create this type of institution, what the power of this type of institution has, and then I'm tying you when you have that kind of ability to to get the word out to 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 organize our culture, and then you can do things like create technology that can change the culture. That's where you see the worldwide impact. And so, uh, Kevin, last question I'm going to ask you. Now, how can individuals in the Black community actively support the growth and sustainability of One United Bank? Go to oneunited.com and sign up for an account. As simple as that. Follow what we're doing. Okay, you, the, the beauty of it is you got a phone, you got a computer, you got One United Bank. One United Bank's right there for you, wherever you are, and and, and it should be part of your of your banking solution. Here again, the stuff that we're introducing over the next um, between now and year end, absolutely revolutionary. I mean, we're introducing new technology, and so and so, you know, we're rolling out. We have a big upgrade coming at the end of September. I would say after, you know, it, but once you get past the it, end of sub, that September, do yourself a favor, okay? This, this, I'm giving you, we've talked about giving you a product that's going to build your net worth, okay? It's going to make you more money. It's going to make you more richer. It's going gonna, it's gonna to allow you to have money for yourself and your family and give you the foundation for future generations. So yes, we need people to support us but we believe we're going to get that support because we're supporting the people. The stuff we're doing, it's going to change your life. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about nothing short of changing your financial life. Thanks a lot for this conversation, Kevin. Well, my pleasure. Thank you so much for taking out the time, and I'm glad we're continuing the journey of bringing the diaspora together.